Well, blessings to everybody. I pray that today is finding you uh, favored and blessed. I have uh, quite a few things that, that I think is wise um, and very important to share uh, during uh, this podcast. And so um, I am kind of getting more into the news aspect of it as well as uh, to, to kind of open up some doors for conversation uh, concerning several things that I believe that are in the earth at this time that we really need to consider, take a look at, um, and um, some things that have been unfolding since I did uh, my last podcast uh, on uh, last Tuesday. And so um, this is going to be a um, uh, one hour conversation podcast show. I will also ask you, if you would, uh, to comment and uh, let's kind of get into uh, some of the things that I believe are going to be tremendously important uh, for you and I both to know as uh, believers. So um, uh, the first thing I would say is welcome to everybody that's here. If you please make sure that you share of the podcast with as many people as you can to get information out there to all the people that are there today. We're going to be talking about earthquakes, solar eclipses, uh, eclipse, and uh, strange occurrences that are happening in the earth, and ultimately what they mean, what does it mean, and what is it really saying um, to you and the earth. And so I pray that you can hear me clearly. If you can, just give me a thumbs up in the chat. Uh, so that I'll know that uh, our sound is really good and that you can um, hear me greatly. And so um, as things are occurring in the earth, uh, I would say that uh, for you and I as believers, uh, thank you for your thumbs up. That's, uh, that helps me out a lot. I would say for you as believers right now, um, if you are a believer, let me say that, if you are a believer, then the word of God is unfolding right in front. If you are not a believer, <clears throat> then the next part of it is, is that uh, you have to consider uh, the fact of if the word of God is actually revealing and unfolding a lot of these things right in front of us, then what does that really mean? And as an unbeliever, you still have to ask yourself, I believe that even unbelievers, you know, even though you may not have the faith to believe the word of God, you still have the intelligence to believe evidence and things that are right in front. And so I would say to you, uh, with this kind of um, with this kind of media outlet and things that we will discuss, I would say to you, consider what we're saying, um, identify what we're saying and ask yourself the question, um, is it possible? That's, that's all I'm asking. Is it possible? Because if what the word of God is saying is possible, and we're looking at things that are happening in the news today, then these are things that an intelligent person, not necessarily a religious person, an intelligent person can say, you know what? There is something about this that just, it's not adding up to the Bible is wrong. And if too many things are happening, I got a blue screen, so let me do this. Um, well, unbutton. If too many things are happening, we have to say to ourselves, then is the Bible true? And what the word of God is saying is true. Now, I've always said a broke clock is right twice a day. So you can leave that as coincidence. But if things continue to happen, then now we have to look at the fact of really what is going on. And if I'm looking at things happening simultaneously, and then I'm going to hear some things today that said that these are the next things that are getting ready to happen, 
then we have to consider the fact that the word of God is true for believers. We have a conviction and we know what we know, but there are unbelievers that are out there. And for those unbelievers, I just want a thought pattern. That's all I do is challenge a thought pattern to say, take a look, see what's there and ask yourself this one question. Can all of this just be coincidence at this time and in this era? Um, and I think that's the question that we have to continue really to ask ourselves. Um, with that being said, uh, let me make sure that I uh, put uh, the advertisement out here. This is um, Mega Boss News. This is the Mega Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Williams, and um, just want to share as much as I can about what's happening now. And, you know, with certain information that is out right now, you don't even know what's going to be censored because uh, sometimes people don't like you to expose and share things, but share it. And then for as long as we can and, and keep it up online, then we will. Um, these are ways to support us. Uh, and so you can cash app at dollar sign Dr. Kevin e. Williams Zell, Dr. Kevin e. Williams at gmail.com, PayPal, paypal.me forward slash Dr. Kevin e. Williams. And then um, you can mail it in my care, Dr. Kevin E. Williams, 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, Carolina. Uh, there are ways to follow us. And I would like for you to uh, follow us at um, Facebook, uh, Dr. Kevin E. Williams, at Instagram, Dr. Kevin E. Williams Official. Um, and make sure it has all of these on here because there are a lot of fake profiles out there that people are responding to that's not me. Um, I just, I, that's not something that I do. All right. Uh, for X, um, Dr. Kevin, uh, Dr. K-A-W official, and then Mega Boss News, um, 777 at gmail.com. Um, also, um, and we'll put this up here next time for those of you that are watching my, my Facebook or Instagram or, or X that we also are on, um, YouTube, uh, which is, um kevin a williams 777 i believe so nevertheless uh let's have um a conversation last week one of the things I discussed was uh, my concerns was for and concerning this this eclipse uh for april the 8th one of the things that I said, and I could not even remember the timing, but I knew that in my studies, I had run across the fact that the last time that we had an eclipse of this magnitude was in the 1800s. And that when it happened, there were a lot of major things and catastrophes that happened around it, including major earthquakes. So in my last podcast, I said that all of this is possible, not knowing that a few days later, there was going to be an earthquake in Taiwan, and back around another earthquake in New York, and the one in Taiwan is uh, 7.2 on the Richter scale. Uh, United States said it's 7.4 uh, in uh, New York, uh, 4.8 on the Richter scale. I actually had um, a few members that were in New York at the time uh, that it happened, and they shared with me their experience and what place they were in New York. And so uh, the question that I have to ask is, what does it mean? I'm going to um, hope we're ready to play um, the videos from Taiwan. I got two videos from Taiwan, and it will just show uh, the earthquake. And please remember, that this is a 7.2, between 7.2, 7.4 on the Richter scale. With that being said, also the earthquake also um, initiated um, a tsunami effect as well. Now, um, are these concerning? Well, it's concerning in this part that um, Matthew, the 24th chapter, the seventh verse says, for nations shall rise against nations, kingdom against kingdoms. We're seeing that already with all of the wars and things that are happening around the world with, uh, with um, Hamas and Gaza and Israel and Ukraine and Russia and Iran and um, Taiwan and China and the United States. So wars and rumors of wars, uh, yeah, we got that. Um, kingdom against kingdom, which is structure against structure when it comes to um, power nations. If you have a nation 
but a nation doesn't necessarily have to be a power nation. So you're dealing with kings against kingdoms, you're dealing with power nations, all right? And then um, there are famines, pestilences. We've seen the famines and we're seeing them now. Um, Haiti is dealing with uh, much, you have Sudan and uh, other nations that are dealing with that. Uh, pestilences, COVID-19 hit the whole world, um, not just a piece of the world, it actually impacted the whole world. And so uh, then it says earthquakes in, um, earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquakes in diverse places, let's look at Taiwan, a diverse place. <clears throat> a diverse place is where there was plenty of water, all right? And so when we look at this um, in diverse places, um, New York, what's around New York? A lot of water. Let's take a look at this now. Up in his foot, a powerful earthquake rocked the entire island of Taiwan within the last few hours. Buildings collapsed and a tsunami formed off the coast. In the capital city of Taipei, tiles flew off of some buildings. Train service was suspended for 23 million people on the island, as was subway service. Taiwan's Earthquake Monitoring Bureau said the quake packed a magnitude of 7.2. The U.S. Geological Survey put it at 7.4. No word yet on any injuries. All right, so let's look at this. So you have a lot of deaths. Um, and the impact of that is horrendous. It really is horrendous. I'm going to show you another video that is um, from the Taiwan earthquake. It's actually right before it happened and, and what people are experiencing as it happened. Um, and so I'm going to say, um, I'm going to put a warning out there, a parental warning um, out there because. Um, I just should. I should put a parental warning out there uh, that you're going to see right before the earthquake happens, and you're going to see people on the street. And there, when it happens, they run because there's a building that you left that is going to come down. So let's see if we can take a look at that, <clears throat> and you can see what's happening um, there. This is uh, when I tell you this is um, as I listen to continue to listen to news commentators. You know, the one thing that I can to hear me say, this is biblical, this is biblical, this is biblical, this is biblical, this is biblical. Everything is biblical proportions. I heard um, a lady on The View, and I'll never hear them say that on The View. Lady, lady said on The View, after all these things are happening, she's going back to church. Now, um, what does that say? That says that people are realizing and identifying that something major really is happening in the world. Let's take a look at this now, if you don't mind. Now, I want you to take a look at that. Go ahead and pull that down. Um, now, this is Taiwan. And this is not, this is right after I talked about this on last Tuesday. And I talked about the round around uh, the last time that we had a, uh, an eclipse of this side, earthquakes would be there. And I remember the 1800s, um, not knowing that Taiwan was going to get hit, not knowing that now, and I'll show you uh, uh, some uh, news there for. Uh, the video of New York, and I think that's that's video is about a, a minute and thirty five seconds that you can see of what they are saying and the impact uh, that it is that it, uh, has happened on New York. Uh, so um, I'm going to have them pull that up. I'll keep talking until they pull that up, and when they pull it up, I'll stop talking so we can take a look at it. But um, New York City has not seen anything like this since the 1800s. So. And there's actually, the, uh, the earthquake was actually centered in New Jersey. The effects were in New York. It was in Philadelphia. Uh, it was in New Jersey, of course. Uh, it was in Vermont, uh, Washington, uh, uh, quite, a bit, quite a bit of places. Let's take a look right now. The ongoing aftershocks from Friday's rare East Coast earthquake. Believe it or not, there have been more than two dozen of them. ABC's Rena Roy is here with more on that. Good morning, Rena. Hey, Joe. Good morning to you. That's right. So many people here in the Northeast were already unsettled when the earthquake hit because, as you said, this is not common here. And then came the aftershocks. There was at least one as recently as Saturday morning, and that was just one of more than 30 since that quake on Friday. 
But look, these are not uncommon. Experts say they can happen for weeks, even months or years following an earthquake. That 4.8 magnitude quake striking near White House Station, New Jersey, in the morning Friday for about 30 seconds near the epicenter. And it was felt as far south as Washington, D.C. and up to Maine. Experts estimating about 42 million people might have felt it. And that magnitude is not really large enough to cause any major damage, thankfully. But of course, as we know, large enough to be strongly felt. And that is true, especially here in the East. Just an interesting little tidbit of science here. Experts say earthquake shaking actually travels through the Earth's crust more efficiently here in the east than it does out west. Whit. Yeah, we know that shaking was widespread up and down the east coast. Thank you so much, Rena. We appreciate it. All right, so let's look at this. So now you have Taiwan that has been hit. Now I want you to consider the fact of the areas that has been hit. Taiwan has been hit. What is the what is the vulnerability of Taiwan? The vulnerability of Taiwan is that you have China who is continuing to circle Taiwan because they want to invade Taiwan to take the territory for their own self. And Taiwan has been fighting and, and literally put themselves together of saying it's not gonna happen. But now you have a 7.2 to 7.4 on the Richter scale earthquake that hits Taiwan. Many people are now trying to gather their lives. And this is what my concern would be. If I had a major concern, this is my, what my concern would be the level of vulnerability of Taiwan. Because if the vulnerability, the vulnerability of Taiwan is of such that China is watching, would or would this not be an opportunity for China to take advantage of Taiwan while they're trying to recover? Would this be because you, you have to look at the fact that, like I said, tsunami. So if, if you're dealing with the tsunami, you're dealing with what actually happened in the world and what happened in the water. So that means that the, the Navy of Taiwan is affected. That also means that the Navy of China is affected. But please remember that when you're dealing with China, you're dealing with 200, maybe 200 or 300 million soldiers. Now the United States only has about 300, um, 330, between 330, 340 million um, in the United States completely. Well, China has that when it comes to their soldiers. Um, please understand that when you're dealing with when you're dealing with this kind of impact and 4.8 on the Richter scale, man, um, 4.8 on the Richter scale uh, uh, on the, uh, the uh, comes what happened in the in the New York, New Jersey area. Guys, guys, and, I, and I'm responding to the IG comment of 4.8 um, uh, earthquake on the Richter scale for uh, that happened on April 8th. Let's take a look something and look at something. If the scripture says that they're gonna be earthquakes in diverse places, we've dealt with the pestilence, we just got over COVID. Earthquakes in diverse places, and I don't know if you've seen it or not, I didn't get the picture, and I'm sorry I didn't put it up, but you'll be able to find it, that as a storm was coming up, lightning struck the Statue of Liberty. And right there on the peak where she is holding now that torch, that famous torch of the Statue of Liberty, you will see that there is lightning that strikes it. Now, where is the, um, where is the United Nations? Where? United Nations. New York. New York. And actually, the United Nations was in session. The United Nations was in session at the time that the earthquake hit. Is God sending a message? Is, 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 is God sending a message to the United States? And is God sending a message to the world? Because we have to start looking at the fact that we have so many people that are trying to act like it's life as usual. Ma'am, sir, it's not life as usual. Not at all. Not at all. And so when I put this podcast together, the question was, and what I, I, the statement was, this is just the beginning. And it is. 
earthquakes. I haven't dealt even dealt with the solar eclipse yet. I'm just dealing with the earthquakes. I haven't even dealt with the strange occurrences yet. I'm just dealing with the earthquake itself. And so now God is saying something, he's speaking something. And to be honest with you, sometimes I think that there are areas of the world that's listening louder than the church. Because we have this mindset that we're still covered, so we're going to do life as usual. And we're playing this, um, what I call a title game. And the title game is, look at what I'm doing, look over here, look over here, look at us, look at us, look at us. And my Bible tells me if God, if Christ said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw a minute to me. And so now we have, um, do we have major concerns? I have major concerns. I do. I had some pictures of the eclipse uh, that I took and I don't know if I'll be able to get them up. Uh, but if I don't get them up now, I'll try to get them up in a special report, maybe later um, this week. But no, I took some pictures and anyone that took a picture, I want you to, um, how many of you all that are watching me right now took pictures, tell you to do something, or look at something. Um, if you took pictures uh, on, uh, on, of the eclipse or you video the eclipse, would you put on here that you took pictures? I'm gonna tell you to look for something on there. Because right now, we got something else happening, guys. We got something else happening. Um, I see um, uh, several people that said, I did take pictures. Predicated pictures that I took and Cobbsy said, I did. Uh, Brandon said, um, I took pictures. Uh, Bishop and video, that's good, it's gonna be useful. Uh, yes, I took pictures. John um, Eagleson said, I, I took pictures. Um, Crystal Grice said, I took a video, very good. You're gonna, because I'm gonna tell you, look for something. Um, um, John Music said, I did. Uh, and I'm looking at uh, different people that said, I did. I want you to look at your pictures. Um, I reviewed a video from um, my son um, um, in Texas. When you look at the pictures, let me tell you what you're gonna see. You're gonna see in the light there, but I want you to look either to the left or to the right, and you're gonna see a small image of the moon and how much of uh, well the sun and the moon and how much of it is covered so you'll see a crescent moon type um situation so take a look at your in your pictures you will see that some will even see a dark imaging on the left and i wish i could pull my pictures up so i can show you a dark imaging on the left and it's you cannot see it because it was so bright you could not get with the naked eye because it was so bright, but somehow the cameras could catch it. And it was something that looked like it was following the eclipse. I don't know what that is, uh, because also um, the, um, the devil comet um, was set to swing uh, by the sun and it could be visible during the eclipse. And so that is a possibility that could have been that or it could have been something else. But very large, circular, and take a look. Um, um, and Cosmia um, said, uh, I was wondering what that was. Exactly. Uh, because a lot of people, and you don't hear it talked about in the news, but those of you that are watching me right now, and I'm sharing some things with you that I don't think that you're gonna hear in the average media, but it is something that listeners, and if you would share it with other people, so people can be aware. And, and I think what people ought to do you start taking those pictures, pulling them out, showing them, and saying, hey, guys, there's something here that people are not talking about and some that people are not watching. And maybe people or someone that has a bigger audience than myself uh, will be able to do, uh, because I do know that people watch, get information, and then they pull that information to use it for other things. I have nothing to do with that. But I, what I will say is, is that when something is like right there in front of you, I tell people don't ignore it. Because, because if it's right there in front of you, there is an explanation for it. You gotta have the mindset of understanding what that explanation really is, what is happening. All right? And so um, let's take a look at it. There's, a, there's something that I wanna show you about the history of Eclipse and where they came from, um, where we are. Because I was talking about Eclipse in the 1800s and things like that. A lot of people were like, you know, didn't know that. But I wanna kind of put that up and I have something, uh, a newsreel actually did it. And I wanna put it up so you can see it 
and I'll keep talking, like I said, until they put it up. But here's the deal. Look at all the possibilities of everything that is happening, and it's matching with the word of God. Uh, wars and rumors of world's kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, um, and earthquakes in diverse places, you know, then you cannot ignore the fact of the full impact, the full impact of really what is taking place right now in the world. Let me see if I can find it, because uh, I've got it here. I've started, I've got a, um, I've started doing things a little bit different so I can have things in front of me if the, if technology didn't work. Let's take a look. August 10th, 1884. 5.2 on an, in greater New York uh, on the Richter scale. There it is right there. All right. August 10th, 1881. December 19th, 1737. 5.2 Richter scale. Watch this. November 30th. 1783, 4.9, Central New Jersey. September 9th, September 9th, 1848, 4.4 on the Richter scale. September 1st, 1895, 4.3 on the Richter scale. And now, magnitude 4.8 earthquake shaped high state area. You're looking at it just like I'm looking at it. It's not something you can ignore. It's not something you can lie about. No, it's right there at you. And the catastrophe and all of this, please understand, this is what has happened. It, it's, it's, go ahead and pull it down. It's heart wrenching, actually. It is heart wrenching. The heart goes out to everyone, all of the people in Taiwan, all the people in New York and surrounding areas that um, have been impacted and affected by it. But there is something else that we also have to deal with, and that is the aftershocks. You heard on the video, the man said there's 24, uh, 24 aftershocks and they last up to a week, months, sometimes even a year. Aftershocks. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but it was some years ago, and I was maybe about a better than maybe 13 years ago, that we had a tremor right here in North Carolina. And a lot of people in North Carolina right now, do you know that North, most North Carolinians do not know? And if and those that are in North Carolina, um, please put a chat if you knew this or not. Do you know that North Carolina right now is on a fault that we can have an earthquake? We had a tremor 13 years ago, literally just shook, and it scared everybody. Didn't last long, but it was a tremor. How many did not know that we were literally um, at North Carolina. Here's the deal. Just because we don't talk about it much don't mean that we don't have a problem. If 4.8 in North Carolina, if we had a 4.8 in North Carolina, we have a lot of concerns. And let me tell you about the concerns of states that do not usually have earthquakes. States that does not usually have earthquakes are in greater danger. So places like New York, places like New Jersey, places like Washington, all these different places, uh, Philadelphia, Vermont, all these different places, they are and they, um, somebody put up there, it happened in 2010. Yeah. Came right through, came right through North Carolina. I felt it, didn't know what was going on. I was like, what in the name of God? And I found out later it was an earthquake. Something that I wasn't expecting, but definitely something that I have not forgotten. Let me tell you why. Because when you're dealing with earthquakes, in places that are not used to having earthquakes, you have a different level of catastrophe and danger that can hit you. And I want you to think about this. In, in cities that have earthquakes, they're, they're all buildings. They're made to sway in case there's an earthquake. It's made to sway with the earthquake just so that it's not stiff 
and the earthquake doesn't shake it. But in cities like, you know, in states like North Carolina, states like uh, New York and New Jersey, we don't do what they do in California. We don't make skyscraping buildings. I think I'm thinking about all the skyscraping buildings right now in downtown Greensboro. None of those, if there was an earthquake that came through here, none of those buildings would sway. Which means those buildings have to absorb the impact of that. And when you're looking at a place like Taiwan, look at how those buildings fell. Look at how those buildings fell. Look how those buildings fell. No, this is, man, this is something different. Gavin Rivera said um, birth pains. Yes. Yes. This is, that's the next scripture. All of these are the beginning of sorrows, which is what? Birth pains. Um, Slow Walk, it said California buildings are on, a ro are on rollers. So California, there's earthquakes so their buildings can absorb it. Y'all tell me what cities are you from? I want to look at that. I want to have I want to have that right now. Uh, I may not even get to everything that I need to get to because I've got to get to church tonight um, to, uh, for leaders meeting and church meeting and things like that. But I want to have this conversation. I want to see how what, what cities are you are, are, are from? Because right now, that's why I, that's why I'm into and I under, and understand eschatology. That's why I focus on it so much, and I listen to people um, that say that they watch because people are not talking about this. Um, so I see Philadelphia, um, I see West Texas, Chicago, um, Pittsburgh, um, uh, Rivera Beach, a Riviera Beach in um, Florida, Burlington. Uh, Philadelphia, Birmingham, Alabama, Wilmington, North Carolina, Connecticut, Charlotte, Philadelphia, Manchester, uh, Connecticut, New Jersey, Maryland. And I'm seeing all of these come in. Um, Rockingham, North Carolina, California um, is here. Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Philadelphia. Um, go ahead and put them up. Uh, Raleigh, Durham, um, North Carolina. Let's take a look at this. Um, New Jersey, um, upstate New York. Um, um, you know, um, um, Little Rock, Arkansas, you know, I'm seeing all of these, um, what is this, um, uh, Windable, North Carolina, Raleigh, um, San Antonio, Texas, all right, so look at all of this, now I want to ask you all, all the question, High Point, North Carolina, Waxhaw, North Carolina, answer this question, how many of your buildings um, Frankenville, Alabama, Detroit, Michigan, uh, sh um, Short Pump, Virginia, Charlotte. Answer this question for me, guys. Answer this question for me. Are the buildings in your city, and I'm looking at, and I know the answer, but I need you to answer that. Are the buildings in your city built to handle the impact of an earthquake? Answer that. Answer that. Detroit, Michigan, Arizona. I see you. Are the buildings that are in your city able to have an earthquake? And I'm saying no. Evelyn Connor said no. 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 Orlando Flock, no. Everybody's saying no, and I'm looking at you all are watching it right here. We're not in states that are ready for an earthquake. 4.8 in New York is troubling. Can you imagine if New York had a 7.2 like Taiwan had? Do you know how many skyscrapers are in New York? When the Twin Towers came down, everybody was talking about the Twin Towers. Nobody was talking about all of the buildings that came around that was around the Twin Towers that were affected and the amount of people of casualties that were affected by the fall of one and then the fall of continued others.
I want you to think about it. And I want you to think about downtown. I'm going to tell you about downtown group model. Downtown Greensboro have some tall buildings. Now, they're not as tall as the ones in New York, but there's some very, very tall buildings. And there's some very, very tall buildings in Winston-Salem. Not so much in High Point, but in Winston-Salem, in Greensboro, we have some very tall buildings. Now, I want you to ask yourself one question. What if one of them came down? One. Because the way that these buildings are, are impacted and the way they're, they're, they're packed it together, if, the, if they have fall, the impact of them is going to be in, uh, uh, unimaginable. Let's look at something else. Now, I'm talking to North Carolinians now. North Carolinians now. And I'm talking about people in Greensboro in particular. What about our fuel farms? You know, we were fifth on the list for when the uh, um, um, United States was attacked in 2001. We were fifth on the list. And the reason being is because the terrorists wanted to attack our fuel farms because remember, one gallon of gasoline is equal to one stick of dynamite. So if you hit one of their fuel farms, you could have blown up Greensboro, High Point, and Winston. Let me ask you a question. A 7.2 hit North Carolina, hit Greensboro, and it is splitting streets. What if it the fuel farms? Well, somebody said all it would do is leak fire. I mean, all it would do is leak, leak, um, uh, leak gasoline and oil. But what would it take? What would it take for there to be a spark? What would it take? It would be catastrophic. It would be catastrophic. You know why? I want you to think about the fact that if you take some gasoline and, and, run, the, and run that gasoline, I would say 15 yards, just a straight line of 15 yards, and then light it. How quickly does that gas run straight? We're not thinking, guys. We're not thinking. And our local politicians should be thinking in a different kind of way. And, in, and, and Greensboro is not the only place that have fuel farms. There are other cities that have fuel farms as well. And because those other cities have fuel farms as well, you have to consider the fact of what are the possibilities of what could happen. What are the possibilities? And I'm not talking about my own state, but I'm talking about my own state. We ain't ready for snow. So we ain't ready for fire. Something major is happening. Something major is happening. So I just put up. And the things I got to just. Um, Nat Turner led his revolt on the night of the eclipse. Did you let me. How much time do I have? 15 minutes. NASA. NASA launched three lock rockets. Three rockets. On the day of the eclipse, they stated to see, I may have the article up here. They stated to see if um, the effect that the eclipse is having on the Earth. And it's just my mind in my reading. But if, if my mind serves me correctly, they named the rockets after an Egyptian deity. I don't even know what to say about that. I don't even know what to say about that. 
Now there is something that is, I'll see if I can find it, but there is something, you know, sometimes I think that what we should do is start looking at um, the meaning of things. Uh, one of the things that I do, um, uh, one of the things that I do when it comes to my preaching, I always go after what is the um, original meaning um, of things. And you may find that the original meaning of NASA may not be something that you were expecting. That's all I'm going to say. So let's look. NASA launches sounding rockets into the moon, into moon's a shadow during solar eclipse. Go ahead and roll it up. What was the purpose? The purpose was it that they wanted to see the effects it would have on the Earth. Go ahead and roll it up so you can see these, um, these rockets, these three rockets that they sent there. These are the rockets that they sent. All right? But why name them after Egyptian deities? Go ahead and pull it down. Because I know we got, uh, we got a short amount of time. CERN. CERN to test most powerful particle accelerator during the eclipse to collide two atoms looking for what they call the God particle. The God particle. The Hedron Collider in uh, Switzerland, and I think I got a picture of it. They may be able to pull it up. They are, and what does CERN do in Switzerland? What they do is, I'll give you a short version. They take particles, they're trying to find, when they talk about the guard particle, they are trying to find the particle that possibly created everything. So let's look. And let's look at this video. Let's take a look. This exists. Uh, as we seem to be getting closer to understanding it does, what would that do? What would that mean? It may mean we get able to un we'd be able to unlock limitless energy. Let me just put it that way. It may be that we would understand the next secret of the universe, that we would know we'd be another step closer to knowing where we came from. We'd be another step closer to understanding the universe itself, which is ultimately quite a mystery to us. What is this Higgs boson God particle? At the very, very beginning of the universe. You see, people here, as a matter of fact, I'm in Los Angeles. People at Mount Wilson, not far from here, notably Edwin Hubble, noticed that all the stars, everything's moving apart. So he reasoned that everything was all together at one time, and this would be the Big Bang. Well, at that time, it is speculated by mathematical, elegant, physical reasoning that everything was kind of one thing. But then after the Big Bang, uh, things started to separate. Things started to take on different properties so that pure energy like light has no mass. The particles of light have no mass. The particles that make up you and me, like you've probably heard mm -hmm. of protons and neutrons and electrons, they have mass. And you know why? Uh, yeah, no. no one really is sure why. <laughs> but it could very well be that there's an exchange of particles. Nowadays, uh, we, we view these things uh, as particles. We do experiments to detect particles and you detect particles. Protons are made of, of quarks, which are held together with glue-ons. <laughs> no kidding. And so <laughs> it could be, it's very reasonable that uh, these other particles uh, all exist in this, in this ether that would be called, uh, named after Peter Higgs, 
right. that uh, is then infused with little particles that ex- that give them mass, that help them have mass. So, so let and this would be the Higgs boson. All right, take it down. Now that is Bill Nye. Bill Nye is a brilliant scientist that believes that there is no God, and that um, he has been trying to prove for years on end that there is no God. He is a um, a committed atheist. And so now he is in support of finding this guard particle because he believes that if they find the guard particle, they can prove the non-existence of God. Um, well, good luck with that, but it's not going to work. I've got to move uh, on because they're looking for this and this is a mess. I want you to now go, um, and we got to talk about something else. I only got nine minutes. I'm going to play a video, and when I play this video, it is um, on um, it is on cicadas. The cicadas are a small little insect that a, a a group of them may come out every seven years, and then they go back. But now we're getting ready to deal with a swarm of cicadas that are coming out. And when I say not millions, not billions, trillions, a troop of cicada insects that are now emerging. In fact, I'll let you see it for yourself. Take a look. A surge of cicadas is expected here this spring more than we've seen in over 200 years. Two groups of the insects called the Great Southern Brood and the Northern Illinois Brood emerge at the same time in late April. Scientists tell us 16 states in the Midwest and Southeast will be buzzing with about a trillion cicadas. Holy moly. It's a rare event that will last about six weeks. When the hordes of male cicadas start humming to find a mate, the noise can be even louder than a plane. Shut it down, ladies, shut it down. (laughs) Uh, This dual surge won't happen again for another 221 years. I have a core memory about cicadas. Go ahead, take it down. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I was probably... A trillion cicadas are getting ready to hit the United States. They're getting ready to emerge out of the ground. Two different groups are getting ready to come together, and they're going to merge to mate. Does this sound like the book of Exodus to you? Swarms of flies. Frogs, boils, tell me your thoughts. This hasn't happened in this magnitude. Ironically, remember I told you about that the, uh, the, uh, in the 1800s, the earthquake? We have not had this kind of magnitude concerning cicadas since when? Watch this, since 1803, 1803, 1803, and we ain't done yet because now we got the red heifers that are going to be sacrificed this month, Israel. Some of y'all want to know what the cicadas bite. No, the cicadas will not bite. As we know it, they're annoying, but I promise you whether they bite or not, and I look you in your face on this one, whether they bite or not, let me, I bet you don't want them in your house and you don't want them on you. You see how big that, big that thing is? You don't like when a fly or a bee is in your kitchen. There's a trillion cicadas out there. If one of them get into your house and much less five or six, oh, and I forgot to tell you, when you, when you spray a cicada with bug spray, they don't die. I think raid like steroids for them. They use it while they work out. I've killed cicadas before. Um, 
If you don't like anything graphic, cut the sound down, and I'll do that like this to let you know that I'm through. All right? So if you don't like anything graphic, cut the sound down. Now, I've stepped on cicadas before, and all you feel is like the crunching of bones. That's how thick it is. And you can feel that thing up under your foot. Now, the reason that I do this is because I need you to understand, see, and know everything that is happening in the world and even more, and I have much more to tell you. Much more to tell you. Can't tell you now. It's four minutes to six. Stop at the clock. I want you to follow me. might have said whether they bite or not a trillion cicadas are too many i agree it's like having 10 or 15 bees in your house flying at one time just too many it's like having somebody open up the door and then flies come in just uh, can't handle it a cicada and these things i don't know if you saw you saw how big it was and bizarre. those cicadas are like this guys they're like this you can pull it up online and see a number of inches of a cicada. Please understand something. And they're going to be out there for six weeks looking for mates at your house, my house, around our doors. And they love hanging on people and just they'll stick to you. You'll walk in the house and won't even know the ones on your back. You're going to hear what I'm telling you. Follow us right now uh, on um facebook on instagram on youtube uh on x um follow us follow follow us i will also tell you give to us and support what we do in this podcast because the news is getting ready to be more intense dollar sign dr k william zell Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com, paypal.me forward slash Dr. Kevin A. Williams, and you can mail it to 1822 Chart Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406 to Dr. Kevin A. Williams. This is what I say to each and every individual. We're in a different place now, guys. I haven't even talked about the devil's neck. I haven't talked about there's a lot that I haven't discussed, but I will do this. The world is in a different place. And stop listening to people that are telling you everything is okay. It is not okay. The scripture says that the moment that people say peace and safety, the moment that destruction will appear. Whether we like it or not. I don't play with God. I don't play with church. I don't play people. I mean what I mean. I say what I say. I get anybody in their face and tell them this is what the truth is. And right now, we got so many things that are being censored on social media and censored on regular media until people can't even get the truth out. The truth can't even come out for us to protect ourselves. I will tell you this, that in this season, it is probably wise for each and every individual to make sure that you fill up your gas tank. If it gets down to, um, if, you, if you're if you from full and it gets to three, three, uh, three quarters full, fill it up again. Why? Because this is the time that you need to look at the fact of all the possibilities that could happen. You need to make sure that you have food around in your house, that is able to last a year or two years or something like that, and you put it up in certain places. You think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. I don't play with coming to souls. I don't play with coming to people's lives. That he will do nothing in the earth except you reveal it to his prophets. And my suggestion to you, you better listen. Because if the billionaires are doing all of these bomb shelters to list something, don't get so religious spiritual that you think 
that ain't nothing gonna happen to me. Yes, the righteous never been forsaken and the seed never begging bread, but why? The reason being is because they obey the direction of God. But if you're disobedient, don't obey the direction because you're listening to somebody that's not connected. They got a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof because they're trying to duplicate the authentic. Then what you're going to deal with is something that you're going to find yourself outside. Outside of the bridegroom chamber, knocking on the door, like it says in, in Matthew, the 25th chapter, let us in, and the groom says, I don't know you. I don't know you. It's too old, I'm 56 years old, I'm too old and I'm too tired to play church and to play with people that want to play church. And you got a lot of people doing that. You got a lot of pastors that are doing that, playing pastor, playing leader. And the world is getting ready to go into chaos. And let me tell you where you find leadership. You don't find leadership when everything is comfortable. You find leadership in catastrophe. That's when real leaders emerge. And right now, we're dealing with something. And anybody that is not warning the world and warning the church of what's happening, major problem. Major problem. My love is for, for each and every one of you. My love is for each and every one of you. Look at that again. Look at that again. These kind of things have not happened since this time. Look at that again. This is how you can support us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Blessings. Have a phenomenal day. God bless.